the the dangerous association yes. with connecting leanness to fitness. At this point, it shouldn't be a shock that people within the CrossFit space have experienced lots of body image issues, but what surprised me was the extent of it and how much this could have impacted Katrin's career within CrossFit. We've heard Annie talk about body image issues before, but I don't think we've heard it from Katrin. Up, like when we were in gymnastics, it was very much like, be very skinny, like be very thin. And that's what I always wanted to be. And especially as a gymnast, you wanted to be small. And yeah. Katrin begins by talking about how she started dieting when she was nine years old. Old. Yeah, so probably from the age of nine, like I remember like dieting from the age of 11. The sport of gymnastics can be really problematic for young girls and I was told immediately that I was too big and too tall to do it. So I took that as my sign to not continue. But Katrin stayed in the space and dieted and tried to make herself leaner. My mom would notice that I was like eating less or watching what I was eating. I remember being on like vacation, my dad like like, why wouldn't I have a slice of bread? And that's literally from the time that I was like 11. So Jesus. that's insane. Yeah. That's in but that was just the start of her issues. As we know, she became an incredible athlete and won the CrossFit Games several times. This was around the time I started CrossFit. So this is 2015, 16, yeah. 17. I even feel like, um, I do feel like the field was very lean. Like, I feel like a lot of the top of the sports were very lean, and I think that was a sought after look. Even I fell into was like to be ready to compete at the CrossFit Games. When I'm fit, I needed to be a certain leanness. But it's clear at this point, this is where the obsession started happening. She started to ask herself, what does the fittest on earth actually look like? And I always did put on weight after the games. And then you get back into your routine and your rhythm and your your body just goes through these flows. And I started thinking that that was not okay. I started feeling the pressure of being the fittest on earth and how should the fittest on earth look. As if fitness is a look and not something that we can do. I talk about this a lot, but the fitness industry has basically brainwashed us into thinking that fitness is a look. And that's mainly because they use fitness models to represent brands and people that are super lean to be the face of media and marketing. And it's changed what we think an athlete looks like. And Katrin fell victim to this too. I distinctly remember seeing videos of her when she was at the top of her game, bringing containers of Tupperware to group dinners and weighing every single piece of food that she ate like I was so restrictive with hitting my exact macros and not going I like remember. I wouldn't go under but I wouldn't go over either in the podcast she said that she was obsessed with hitting her exact macros. I was very like controlled by my macros if that makes sense yeah. she was either like paleo or keto one or the other so she'd have like vegetables and stuff but her diet would be very low in carbohydrates and there would be absolutely no processed carbs i kind of freak out about it because i just didn't know the exact breakdown of carbs protein and fats she said that she needed to know the exact proteins, carbs and fats in every single bit of food that she put in her mouth. And this kind of mirrors the discussion that we've been having around orthorexia within CrossFit. These are some of the symptoms of eating disorders like orthorexia. And while none of us can make a diagnosis unless we're a trained professional, it's easy to see that some of these behaviours are really disordered. She recognises now that hitting her exact macros had nothing to do with her performance. My macros don't know my training. My macros don't know my metabolism that day or that period. They don't know where I am in my cycle. Like my macros don't know those things. And if I finish a grueling day, what if I had run intervals and lifting and a mac on and I finished it with a zone two? That is a massive day. And if I don't fuel to recover, I was only breaking my body down. And if my body is hungry after finishing my macros, I think my body knows better. That being super lean doesn't necessarily transfer over to being your absolute best. Annie, however, never got into this obsession, but she said that she felt the pressure to obsess about macros and to really know what your macros are. Um, but it was kind of like embarrassing if you weren't doing your macros. You were like kind of lazy. Oh, I didn't feel like that. Oh, I feel like that was the perception. I felt like I got judged for it. That's what I'm saying. Like feel like you're getting judged for that. Then it's like, oh, are you not trying yes. as much as everyone yeah. else? Part of me wonders whether this extreme obsession with cutting out food groups and macros and basically under fueling led to Katrin not continuing to be the fittest on earth. And I actually did predict this at the time. I'll see if I can find some clips, but I remember seeing, I think it was like the road to the games and I was obsessed. Like I would watch everything to do with CrossFit. And I remember her talking about how obsessed she was with her macros. And I just started learning about how to fuel your body 
body and also the difference between being in a deficit and eating enough to fuel your performance. And I'd also just learned that cutting out carbohydrates is not conducive to good performance and that you can end up with a massive lack of energy. I think I'd come out of a cycle of doing paleo myself and I'd done a lot of damage to my body by doing that and I was experiencing extreme fatigue. And I think seeing Katrin doing a diet like that where she's restricting carbohydrate made me wonder if she was experiencing a similar thing and felt just as fatigued because she wasn't fueling correctly. Thankfully now she's recognised that that was the wrong approach. She said she knows now that her body knew better and it was telling her that she needed more food and that her macros that she decided on had no way of knowing what kind of training volume she'd done that day or how much stress her body was under. Annie wasn't sucked in by this obsession but she does say that she thinks most female athletes are dramatically under fueling. I do think that a lot of women are under fueling. Especially during that period of time there was a lot of messaging that wasn't helpful. She brought up that some Someone said that CrossFit Games athletes should be 8% body fat for men and 12% body fat for women. And I learned someone so much. Someone went out and said, and this, this um, hit me pretty hard. I got really upset about this. But someone went out and said that all women competing at the CrossFit Games had to have body pr uh, pr fat percentage under 12%. Mm -hmm. And all men like under eight or six percent or yeah. something. I don't remember the exact number there. And I remember somebody saying that, but I can't remember who it was. Oh my god, I found the video. Basically, it's Ben Bergeron. And he's saying that men need to lose weight until they're around eight percent and that women should try and aim for around Catherine's range, which is like eleven percent. But I watched that and I remember that had an impact on me and it made me feel like I had too much body fat, even though I wasn't obviously that competitive. I want to make this point very clear. Twelve percent body fat is not healthy. I am not under 12 percent and no, i have wouldn't. once been under 12 percent and we that was before i started crossfit yeah. and that's when my period i stopped having my period my system was messed up i was too lean i didn't have enough energy i looked this up and between 10 and 13 percent is essential body fat this is body fat that you need for your body's natural functions if you have any less than this you start to experience adverse health effects and being underweight and having too little body fat is actually more unhealthy than being overweight and there has been a few studies on this i'll link them in the comments if i can find them and after a little bit of research i found that any less than 16 percent body fat is considered too low for women. This obsession with leanness is not only unhealthy but it is dangerous and it can lead to obsessive behaviours with body checking, feeling like you're not healthy because of the way your body looks and at the absolute worst triggering eating disorders. I've spoken about the adverse health effects of having too low body fat quite a lot on my channel but Katrin is the perfect example of this. She said during the game season she was obsessed with looking the part and being super lean. There were so many of us that were just very, very lean. I did not get my period through the whole year. And this led to her losing her period because her body fat was too low. But now thinking about it and for your hormonal health and for your fertility in the future. It's just also, what does it tell you? Yes. Like, what is your body telling you at that yes. point? This can lead to infertility and osteoporosis. I always got it after the games. Like, once I'd taken like a month off, I'd get it and then I'd get so lean again that I didn't have it. She said the only time her period returned was when she would gain a little bit of body fat during the off season. But then she swiftly started feeling bad about her body because she'd gained weight and went back to her obsession with being lean and trying to look like the fittest on earth. I'm so glad that athletes in the CrossFit space have started to realize this and they're talking about it. I don't need to be leaner to be fitter. I need to be fitter to be fitter. And sometimes being leaner, you don't have enough storage. Like the CrossFit Games is a five day brutal competition. Like what's gonna happen on Saturday night or Sunday when your storage, you have nothing to just like hold on to anymore. Exactly. And I would recommend watching the whole podcast. It's really eye-opening and hearing more stories around this topic really shows that there's work to be done. On the other side of things, Danny Spiegel is strong and she talks about how she eats cookies and doesn't restrict food groups and eats enough. And she is changing CrossFit for the future of female athletes. If you'd like to know exactly how, then watch this video next. Thank you for watching guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.